And I just ran in naked screaming and went, ah, and then closed the door and ran back. And no one wants to see that. <laughs> I committed two crimes. Hold on. It's worse somehow. What Jews is- would be like, the f*** is wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, my huh? God. Passport, Passport bros. Passport bros. You get it. Hello. Everyone's with me. Come on. Hello. <laughs> it's bat phone for butt stuff. <laughs> That's when you know you're going deep. This is, like, essentially the problem of what we're living through. I hate to ask this, but... Uh, <laughs> Did a crazy roadrunner give you a cigar that was actually a piece of dynamite? Because if he did, did you light it already? You lit it already, didn't you? Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. You're listening to Gas Digital, best of the week. That shit is hard. (laughs) That is our litmus test of like, I mean, all this is to say that it's like we go incredibly hard in the demo (laughs) phase. Like, especially with, you know, when I first joined the band, you know, we we spent two months in it, it was largely the guys just like throwing the book at me and like, you know, just every day, just like. Is he the guy? Is he the guy? Is he the guy? How hard can we push him? And this and that. It was like two months of that in the demo phase where it was like every day I was handed, a, you know, Jim had, you know, Jim had a wealth of, 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 uh, of material where it would just be every day. Here's a new demo. Learn it. 20 minutes. Go in there. Do your thing. And then we listen and analyze and craft into more of a song. But we would go incredibly hard in the demo phase where then yeah you get you get that you know you really have to um that's when you know you're going deep when you're like fuck man like the demo is so (laughs) thought out and i'm so attached to it and you know what i love like part of my heart is this this demo came from the genesis of that idea so how can i not get emotionally attached to that and you yeah it, it creates for some real like you know some tense moments within ourselves of like you know you when you go to record it for real, you know, and take it out of that demo phase, you have to, you have to elevate it. You have to make, you have to take the demo and be more pleased by what is actually going to make its way out there. And when you go really hard in the demo phase, it's diff- that that process becomes even more difficult because you're then, then you're, you know, you're in the boxing ring with yourself, you know, you're fighting yourself because you have to, grapple with that like here's what i'm so attached to i've been listening to it in my car for months and months and months and now that i'm actually doing it it's gotta be better at, or at least as good and uh yeah the the more and more tools you have in the demo phase i can see this becoming uh some demoitis uh uh you know facilitator but you know <laughs> i'd rather i'd rather have i'd rather have more tools that make me prouder of, of our initial work and, and really fleshing out those in, initial ideas than being like, Oh, I can't wait till we get to an actual studio and I can record this and hear what it really would sound like. I like having those, those tools at the end of the day. Spreader of the demo itis. <laughs> In New York City, many people move here to pursue the arts or modeling. At any time of day in Times Square, you can see famous photographers taking pictures of famous models. Models are usually women, but also men. Sometimes they're very beautiful, like this one. Sometimes they're big, fat, ugly girls, and people tell you that you have to respect them the same way, even though they're not that good looking. This model is good looking and nobody is even paying attention to her because people are so used to seeing good looking people in New York. If she was throwing the powers with a fucking bikini on. It's not like when you go to England where everybody's ugly and they look like their teeth were kicked in. Oh my gosh. Uh You fit the profile. (laughs) Welcome to the uh, all right, so yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, all right, so women have accomplished a lot of things. Go ahead. 
Wait, hot women get a ton of attention for Women's History Month. We want to celebrate some of the world's most deformed women. Is that what you want? Yeah, like yeah. It. We have a we have the top three most deformed women of most all deformed time. women. Are deformed. you one of them, Fatty? <laughs> Whoa, Lewis! Jesus Actually, I'm not. Effing that's Christ, two dude. women over there. That's two women. You Lewis, just hurt. Becky flew in for that. You're psychotic. She's glowing. You're out of your goddamn tree. It's so so disrespectful to women. She's all right, fucking. Alex, show us these freaks. The last one is Khadijah Khatoon. Uh, so she suffers from something called neurofibromastosis. And, uh, okay. Oh, my God. Okay. She got a pussy on her face. Yeah. Is that a okay, person? you saved the best for last, uh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, the first one doesn't seem that bad. Oh, oh look at her Lord. mom. She's like, look what I made with my shitty pussy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you give birth in elephant shit water. <laughs> Help us. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Sally Strong? This one. Her daughter, oh, I swear to God, I, I realized it's hand on her shoulder. I thought she had a thumb growing out of her face. I swear to God. It's, yeah, that wouldn't be surprising. Doggy, that is, she looks like, like uh, This is my best looking child. What, what? <laughs> this is the one they put on camera. A She's those, actually uh, pretty good looking for an Indian woman. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of those girls getting throat fucked in the last montage there looked like that with the sax on their face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's an after a Bella Danger shoot photo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, it looks like the guy's dick broke off in her mouth and his balls <laughs> stayed behind too. Yeah, yeah. She just wore them off. <laughs> it looks like somebody put a piece of dynamite in her mouth and tricked her. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> yeah, you're right. She looks like she's always sad. You're right. it looked like Chin up, lady. I mean, look, look on the hey, bright guess, side. Don't, I, guess, I hate to ask this, but uh, <sighs> did a crazy roadrunner give you a cigar that was actually a piece of dynamite? Because if he did, did you light it already? You lit it already, didn't you? I mean, yeah. look, she's not attractive, but her attitude is what's bothering me right now. She's so <laughs> fucking depressing. Fucking have a little bit of fun. Yeah, twerk. God, God really fucked up. <laughs> he was like, should I make a girl? And he's like, nah, a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> she got earrings, though. That's cool. I mean, stick her out in the yard and she's scare laughing? away the crows. That's I'll all. say uh, always. <laughs> she's laughing right there. Look, she's having, now she's having a fun time. Looks like I, I might there. be stoned, but it looks, it could also, if you guys got to take it from different perspectives, it could also be a roaring lion with a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No? Yeah, I, I see it. Go okay, with me. thank get you. There, thank get you. there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna start fucking. Oh, it also kind of looks like it, like um, like uh, like a newspaper drawing of Artie Lang. Maybe. <laughs> you say or, like his, his nose is all smashed it, in. It also looks like now. Tell me if you see this. A gopher with a wig on its whole body <laughs> eating a piece of messy steak or something. Oh, yeah. Do you guys see the go for eating steak? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it's just... Dude, let's play what does her face look like? <laughs> it's like clouds, dude. Yeah, it's a Rorschach face. <laughs> Zach Amico's Midnight Spook Show. They say that's what a filmmaking thing, that if, um, if you show a gun in the first act, somebody has to fire it in the third. Mm. Same rule if you show your dick in the first act. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. As a man who's shown his dick in the first act of movies. Ah. And then again in the third. And you shot those scenes first. No, no, that luxury <laughs> was provided for the ladies. I was I was forced to shoot mine at the end of the shoot. And then again in reshoots. <laughs> oh, no. And then when I said, I'm not sure if I should be naked here, I was screamed at, well, you were naked before. What the fuck's wrong with you? So you kind of wanted to get naked. It was my idea. I didn't realize how long. You don't realize how long a day is until you're naked the whole day. Right, because it was just like constantly robe on and off the whole time? or Not you even just... robe, sheet. Second time I did it, I bought myself a robe. Yeah, there you go. I assumed I would get a robe. Smart and that's, monkey. You know, that's my fault. So it was sheet with two juggalos uh, <laughs> covering me. <laughs> That sounds like a good Friday night. What what movie was that? That was Return to Newcom High. Right. Uh, I, I, if I've told it on the show before, I apologize. I'll keep it really brief. There's a scene where the two girls in the movie, uh, so it's like a high school movie, and uh, they tell me to take my clothes off and meet them in the uh, the uh, parent or like the teacher's lounge, and uh -huh. they're both gonna fuck me and they're pranking me. But in the scene, we're practicing and. Uh, the bit is I get naked, I run, and I hang a left. 
and we rehearse it, close on, close on, close on, rehearse it, close off, hang left, and we're in this. Uh, that's Ted yeah, Ramey, right? Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. so we're in a used to be a high school. Now it's an artist space where people rent different rooms for different shows. And we had paid two thousand dollars to have the school for a month because uh, we got a sweetheart deal, right? So we rehearse it, bang a, you know, get naked, bang a left, get naked, bang a left. I we do the first take, I get naked, I get nervous, I hang a right. <laughs> I walk Did your into, dick go left? Oh boy, life went left. <laughs> I walked into and I apologize. I don't know a better term for this. Yeah. Uh adult daycare. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I walked into a room of 25 special needs adults, many of whom, no joke, were wearing helmets. Right. And I just ran in naked screaming and went, ah, and then closed the door and ran back. Well, good news is they're probably used to that in that room. Or yeah. who's yeah. going to believe them? Right. <laughs> If they came home that day, like, how was school? <laughs> a naked fat man ran in and ran out. You're like, sure he did, Sparky. And they're like, oh, it's Sparky. Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> what up, motherfuckers? It's the Real Ass Podcast. We are of the generation where the internet came about, and we all were on Rotten.com. You're how old? You? You're, you're younger than 38. me. 38. Oh, yeah, you're about almost my age, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're from the generation, the Rotten.com generation. Oh, the, two half a TV, all yeah, that, two, two, the, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, those we would buy the videos, face the death videos that you know. Face the, the death. This is all. our generation. So the reason I assume R. Kelly you guys tape. Are, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy the R. Kelly tape. I didn't buy it. I oh, bought that shit. Doggy, that's crazy. I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the R. Kelly tape at a gas station. Do you have it? When I was like Still? 15 or 16. I was 15 Get when rid I saw of it. it. Doggy, I was like 16, yeah, 16 years old. Oh, I, I got downloaded it, it on Kazaa. Huh? Yeah. I downloaded it on That's Kazaa. just straight up child porn. I'll admit, uh, you straight up child time, porn on an ottoman. I one time bought child porn. <laughs> Nah, Flip I never it. bought it. I thought I was a good guy because I never jerked off to it. I, I never jerked off couldn't. to it. That's crazy. I was looking at it like, yeah, she's too young. It was just piss. I was like, I, I, but as, as funny as I, I can't do that. When I, so funny now because as it registers now in my head, I didn't even look at it as a kid. I just it was R. Kelly pissing on a girl like yeah. in my head. That's all it was. It was like, I was like what and fuck? also I didn't at the time we didn't know if it was real. Right. There was a guy in glasses. He wore the glasses in the video. He looked exactly like but R. Kelly. He looked, he looked yeah, just like But that's the thing. It was with grainy video. It was almost like, is this really R. Kelly pissing on a girl? That's right. crazy. It was almost like internet lore. We weren't really sure if it was actually him when we got it. But that was I bought that and the Pamela Anderson sex tape at Getty. <laughs> On Route 9W, <laughs> Route 9W, Route 9W. The, 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 the Getty gas station in West Havisher, New York, doggy, they had a little section of like porno. Wow. I might, honestly, I might have stole it. To be honest with you, there's a good chance I could have stole it because I would just steal shit. That feels that. like a story. Le less of a tracking. I didn't buy child porn. <laughs> <laughs> I just I remember. Stole I stole child so, porn. <laughs> I committed two crimes. Hold on. It's worse somehow. But you were a child, so that's why. Yes. Yeah. Because that tape went around my high school and the motherfuckers was just like, you see the tape yet? But yeah. it, it, but I remember at the time it just didn't register as child porn. It registered as like just R. Kelly pissing on a chick, right? Yeah. And I guess because we had in high school there was fifteen year old girls that would fuck adults, that didn't register as fucked up. I remember the girls yeah. that were like fuck, my this chick Allison that we were friends with. Her boyfriend was thirty, yeah. driving around a pickup truck, right? And we were fifteen. That didn't register as fucked up. It it registered as like oh he it registered as weird or fun creepy. Yeah, yeah, but not yeah. like not like criminal. Right. We'd always think not the criminal. guy was a loser. That yeah. was yes. a, yeah, it wasn't. What a, you're right, what you're a right. bum, dude. Yeah, you're dude. we saw high school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> that's funny. As black, Until as black you're kid. 25 and you're like, yeah. <laughs> as a black kid, <laughs> we see a chick with the new Jordans on. She fucking a drug dealer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, she and, fucking a nigga that's 25. But it was never. <laughs> It was just a difference in generation. Like, we didn't look at it as, like... like no, I, every eighth grade had the girl whose boyfriend picked her up. Yeah, 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 that yeah. shit! Yeah. Tanisha! Yeah. Graduated. Tanisha! 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 Yeah. <laughs> You're out there. A girl in my... That's a, a country. My, that's a country. A Tanisha. <laughs> Tunisia is a country. Tanisha. <laughs> but, yeah, I knew so many Tanishas in South Jersey. Oh, yeah. Tanisha with the Jordans and the extra... Who the fuck Tasmania is Miller. I remember you, bitch. <laughs> Tasmania Miller. That's very close. <laughs> I knew a few Tasmans. <laughs> Tasmans. Croatia, <laughs> Washington. <laughs> Croatia, Washington. <laughs> Jesus Christ.
So your other uh, podcast is called Dumb People Town, where you highlight idiotic, stupid stories that you find, I guess, online. I would like to hear when you when I say to you, what is like the most shockingly stupid thing <laughs> that you covered? Is there one that comes to mind? There are a handful that come to mind. There's the guy who got pulled over by the cops and in his glove compartment, he had a dildo in his backseat. He had a rattlesnake and in his trunk, he had enriched uranium. We're like, this guy's got a lot of shit in his car. So then we played the game on the podcast. What doesn't he have um, a relationship with his biological father? Probably not. <laughs> nope. Custody of his uh, kids. Custody right, of his kid? kids. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. Probably not. A GED. Definitely not. So, definitely. I mean, there's that. There was like the guy who tried to rob a house with his cat. That was hilarious. Meaning, like, meaning yeah, he, he was holding his, his cat. Okay. No, he brought his cat with him on this robbery. And it's like. Dude, of all the animals, of all like, the animals you that you got to get, they're not going to come when you call. Like if you uh. ever had a cat, like the, you know, the best cat in the world is like someone's like, he knows his name. He comes to you occasionally when you call him. I'm like, <laughs> you're saying the best cat in the world is a mediocre dog. All right, fine. Whatever. Are we sure it but, wasn't an ocelot? Maybe it could yeah, rough some people uh, up. Maybe. Uh, maybe if you pick a bigger cat, like a big cat out on the road. Yeah, you, you um, know, like so, Salvador Dali had. They had a little viciousness to them. They threw right, 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 possibly. Maybe. The pa- a puma. Um, no, that's what I mean, there was a woman. There was a woman who got her head stuck in the tailpipe of a truck at a country music festival. Or How as we like to, re- it's just a big tailpipe. But she, I don't know why she was like, let me see if I can get in there. And, well, um, and people yeah. say people at country music festivals are not small minded. I'm like, there's hey. the, there's the proof, bro. There it is. Is it a shockingly high amount of Florida stories or not really? Lots of Florida stories. So what Florida does, then Oregon kind of does this too, is they release their police blotters. So like, you know, we know kind of what's going on. And there's a lot of like the guy who, you know, had th- what we sort of started to do now, which is kind of fun, is like on Reddit, there's a lot of who's the asshole. Those are fun stories. Mm-hmm. Like, sh- I, my, the, the woman who wasn't invited to, she's pregnant and wasn't invited to her own baby shower because the husband just wanted to have it with just his boys. Like, who's the asshole? Yeah, kind of like yeah. you read the like, details. Or, or we named our dog after my sister's child or they named their baby after our dog and then they get into a fight over i mean there's like the woman who who burned down her house because she was trying to kill a spider i mean there's so <laughs> many stories. the woman who tried to marry a chandelier i'm like that's he, uh, that's pretty cool he's he's not Look, that you know where he's gonna be all the time you know that's he's right he's not gonna cheat on you with and like it's a also sconce. easy to turn her on you get hey, it everyone's with me come on hello <laughs> What is the dumbest reason for a fire that you've ever seen in your firefighting career? For a fire? Well, I know I started the, uh, we thought we had a fire and it was, uh, someone was trying to burn down their house and did an absolutely terrible job. Like the worst <laughs> job I've ever seen in my life. I was like, oh, okay. Well, well, we well, well, we put it out. For insurance? What, yeah, I guess, yeah. And they, then they've been in their garage too. But you can clearly see it was not like accidental. It was definitely, you know, I was... So an arsonist, and uh, I walked in the house, and we got in, and like the house, we put it out, and it was just like a little burn burn trail on the uh, carpet. I'm like, oh, okay, like sweet. Like, Why you just stomped like, it out like, with your feet? Do a better job. Just double a bunch of gasoline and call it a day. Uh, so I want Harrington's opinion on this. WWE in talks with state gambling regulators. Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah. Harrington, get in here. Harrington, did you hear about this yet? Did you hear about this? WWE this? in talks with state gambling regulators to legalize betting on scripted match results. Jesus. Yikes. On scripted? On, on fake wrestling, they're going to allow gambling. Now, I know Vegas does odds on, like, the big one, on, like, WrestleMania. Harrington, your opinion on people... because. Aren't people, how are they going to keep the people that write it from gambling on it? Well, so they do do the the switches day of. So yeah. that's like a big thing where, you know, like uh, realistically, I'm more worried about it from the gambler's perspective because if FanDuel has a handle where it's like, look, we're 
for instance, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. I damn near lost like fifteen hundred bucks. You uh, bet on this? Almost. Un- almost. I was this close to, to pushing the, the 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 button when uh when I had uh you know like a, a, an illicit. Uh, Wait, who was it? Undertaker versus who? Brock Lesnar. I bet Undertaker takes that. Yeah, you would. You would. It was a minus 1,200 favorite or something like that, and you would have lost your shirt. Uh, so, and no one wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, the bigger concern there is like if FanDuel or, or one of these you know betting sites is like, yeah, we have way too much money on Roman Reigns here. You guys think you could throw us a bone and, and screw over the betting public? Oh, I yeah. think I think that's way more susceptible than, you know. Um, Happens in boxing, too, though. What do you mean? Like, there, uh, there's all kinds of guys taking dives and shit. And... Right. And, like, you know, you can, like, you, you can, if you're a promotion, you can work the, the, the judges ringside to, to give an outcome yeah. favorable to the promotion. But, I mean, this seems, like, it's way cleaner, right? Like, there's no... There's no judges getting in the mix. You know what I mean? Like, there's no there's no chance of a one-punch knockout. You know what's going to happen here. Yeah. So that is... I bet on The Undertaker having an asshole tattoo, and I fucking <laughs> lost my house on that. I just bet on all of them to beat their wives at some point. <laughs> and I'm, I'm cleaning you up. You cash big on Chris Benoit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, that condoning shit, we you, you guys think Adidas will take Kanye back on? Now, Adidas taking a this? huge loss right now. Have you they heard lost about so this much though? money? I've heard there, there's I've apparently heard there's like rumblings a, of it. Yeah, right. there's like a warehouse with like close to like 1.2 billion dollars worth of inventory that's already Yeezy branded and low, and they're like, "Fuck, this is like 10 billion in revenue that y'all gonna lose." Yeah, and they're like, "Adidas ha. gonna go under." But why? How? Why not just release it without? Did they have to be? They got, Here, so here's why. Here's why, Derek. If they release the Yeezys as Adidas without Yeezy, will you buy them? Absolutely not. That's why. Absolutely <laughs> not. I Even, need that bipolar genius stamp of approval on my fucking sneakers. I need that crazy ass nigga to go why, on those mine. That is why. That I'm is why Adidas Yeezy is like without Yeezy. On Adidas it? is like fuck. How much do Put we care Kanye about? On. How much do we really care about anti-Semitism? We're talking about ten billion dollars. Ten guys. billion. It's yeah. anti-Semitic <laughs> to say no to ten billion dollars. It is. What Jews if, would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Yeah. What if? <laughs> what if this say? What I burned up for what? All this shit, and you're gonna turn down ten billion? What That's if- anti-Semitic. <laughs> you better say yes to that goddamn money. <laughs> what if the settlement is that you can still get Yeezys, but you have to wear a yarmulke? I fuck with. I fuck with that. <laughs> I fuck with that. Back. That's how you can like. As a matter of fact, walk the line. As a matter of fact, yeah, well, let's do that deal. Clip keepers. This is how we're gonna get clip keepers in the clip game. Keepers. Have you heard of clip keepers? I have not. Oh, uh, Jewish dude entering the league basketball. He's got a sponsorship with a yarmulke company. Clip keepers. Uh, uh, yeah, clip the clip on the back. So that you can still play ball. It's like the under armor for yarmulke. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. Sport, yeah. Let's get them going. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Yo, the three stripe little beanie though. Yo, <laughs> you could look we'll tough. Jesus, but yeah. a yarmulke coming with each one. Oh. Each pair come with a yarmulke that you might have to wear. That you might have to mandatory. <laughs> that is funny though. Anti-Semitic to turn down. It's anti-Semitic to turn down ten billion dollars. That's a long title, but I'm going to try to find a way to make that the title yeah. of the show. <laughs> 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 There was always like a crazy amount of corruption in our government. Governments are corrupt. That's the nature of them. Um, there were lots of problems. I mean, some I was even just talking about that go back to like, say, the 90s or whatever. But doesn't it feel, Rob, like there's something kind of profoundly different in this country that like the country we grew up in, your regular daytime TV show wasn't just advocating we, you know, ban free speech and must always listen to the government. It just seemed like there was something almost in the American DNA that was like, yeah, we don't really talk like that. You know, like we don't. That's not the type of thing that we just put. We at least pretend that we're a free country where, of course, we all believe in free speech. Now, this is just a very common like it's this isn't even like a controversial thing that was said on The View that it's like, whoa, I can't believe Whoopi Goldberg came out and argued we repeal the First Amendment. That's kind of crazy. This is just a casual. This just that's just where we're at. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's free speech, but you can't lie. That should be illegal. Lying. You know, and we determine this is a lie. 
I think it's really, and this might not be the most uh, clear-headed thought, but I think it's really just a function of the amount of money government spends and how socialized we are. So if you can look at it, if you can look at the government that they're inherently going to make uh, self-serving decisions that are not in the public good, so the more money they have, the worse their decisions are going to be, and then the less free speech they can allow for because they're making more mistakes. I mean, yeah. you can even look at COVID through that lens if you just look at the way the entire medical apparatus kind of had to be in line with government because of all the government money. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it. you know what I mean? So it's just, it's all just downhill from being more socialized because there is more government spending. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I think you're really on to something with that. And I think the more areas that government touches, the more poisonous things get, you know? There's, and then the more they everything... can't allow for truth. Well, right. I mean, if you think about even like, um, in terms of science, and I'll, I'll say this as someone who, you know, I have a, a pretty like, you know, profound experience with this myself, um, whereas I, you know, my, I had a son who had open heart surgery as a newborn baby. And it's like, it's remarkable the advances in science that we've made. I mean, it's like crazy that they're like, we can do these things and that it works and like they can save a baby's life. And it's all these things that we have that we take for granted around us all day. Of course, the computer we're talking on to each other right now you know like all of these things are amazing but where is the areas that science is just completely perverted it's all the areas where it's political you know it's like climate change and covid and this stuff this is where you constantly just get all the wrong answers there's no other area of of science in modern societies where they're just constantly getting it wrong over and over again like that you know what i mean you just don't see that in you don't see that in like a physics department somewhere. You just don't don't see it. But when when the government money has touched it, it is like this poisonous thing where now all of a sudden the entire incentive structure is messed up and everything becomes corrupted. Um, this is like essentially the problem of what we're living through. All right, let me, I'm, I'm going to open with this question. If you guys no. had a fucking house, no. would you have a lawn? Well, you, yeah. already, you already know that I'm Italian, so I'd clearly rip out the lawn and c cement it and then park extra cars that I don't need on that. That's that what I'm too. talking about. <laughs> fucking lawns are useless, dog. No, They're fucking mad whack. Why the fuck do you need? Would anyone ever do anything with their lawn? You could put like a... You, you can put like a fucking those uh, inflatable pools out there and shit. You can play so the broke kids when they come bocce over on a lawn. Oh yeah, I'm all right, a backyard is so much more valuable than a fucking useless oh, lawn that you're lawn. just maintaining. Huh? Yeah, it's true. Because I'm Nobody, from New York, you don't see front lawns in New York City. Though. Very few people do anything Everybody with their backyards. front lawn, and also they're like a huge problem. You know, Penn and Teller did an episode about lawns years ago. Did they? And a lot of people get arrested. Yeah, a lot of people get. A, first of all, a lot of times these uh, uh what are they called? The uh, uh, HOAs. HOAs. They will mm. require you to have a certain type of grass that you cannot find in an area, oh, and yeah. it'll be like high, like wall. It's, it has to be one type of grass, and, and then you it has have to be, cut a certain length, right? Your, yeah, your lawn has to be maintained a certain amount, or they will literally. There's guys that are in jail for not keeping their lawn up. Then why I like fucking go the Italian way and just fucking pay it? What the in fuck? In some of these areas, you're not even allowed, you're not allowed to do that. You have to yeah, have your HOAs is a real up. scam, dog. Who the fuck is an HOA to tell me what to do with the lawn of the house I own? They're the homeowners association. They're they're the law. Wait, it's like no, copland. The and cops are the law, not the fucking HOA. Nah, yeah, yo, but you're the cops the work for the HOA. Out, so. They're Dick Jones. Hell yeah, dog. Somebody's gonna, go, somebody's gonna go in there when you're just chilling with your family and be like, bitches, leave. And then you're gonna die on your shitty lawn. I can't believe this shit because look, man, fucking you gotta pay for fucking lawn mowers or uh fucking the lawn range lawn rangers to fucking come take care of your shit. It's fucking stupid. You call them the lawn yeah. rangers? It's from Bottle Rocket, dog. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I knew I heard that shit so <laughs> Bottle Rocket. <laughs> or the lawn the rangers. Worst. That was the worst. But it would uh, be like a, a white guy on a horse enforcing lawn rules in the wild, wild west. What's the deal with HOAs? Why the fuck do they feel like they're on top of the world? Because they want their community to look exactly the same everywhere? Yeah, no blacks. Oh, my God. Wait yeah. a second. How the, If we don't have lawns in this country, yeah. how are we going to tell other races to stay off of our lawns? 
Yeah, and true. if we don't do that, what are our old actors going to do? There will be no Gran Torino in that desolate future yeah. you're painting. No, Gran Torino is going to look like 16 Downing Street. and oh. But here's the, no thing. Front here's the thing. Let me throw this out there. In Gran Torino, okay. he told those kids yeah. to stay off his lawn, but then he was friends with that Asian kid. It brought the races go. together. That's why we're a melting pot. It's because of Didn't lawns. Didn't he die on his lawn? Yo, that's deep. I just realized he died on that shit. Mad deep. Spin roast, rocking coast to coast. Got a dope competition. Louis Jay's the host. Who's got the joke composition? The difference between Karen's OnlyFans and McDonald's is that McDonald's, the seven is worth your $10. <laughs> it's a quarter pounder. It's the... <laughs> McDonald's is very strict with their time. After 10 a.m., they stop serving breakfast. And after 10 p.m., they start serving ass whoopings. Yeah. <laughs> Getting sucker punched out of McDonald's has put more Americans to sleep than The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget this old Patrice O'Neill interview. Comedy fans remember it. He was talking about how, where he talked about being in L.A. and he had two cheeseburgers on his stomach. And he said that if he had a gun in that moment, he would have shot himself in the head. You guys remember this interview? Yeah, yeah. Who would have known the cheeseburgers were the gun? <laughs> they, they weren't staring down the barrel of two whoppers. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. I, okay. Last joke. Last joke, all right. Da -da 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 -da. Um, oh yeah, sure. Last joke. I, I, I actually, I just like to make this time to, uh, to make an announcement. Uh, you know, McDonald's bathrooms are more known for heroin shooting than shitting. Uh, that's why this year there will be a memorial service for the mother of Louis J. Gomez at the McDonald's ladies room on 160 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, 07505. Now that's important because not it's not just the area code, it's also the bathroom code. So you're gonna need that. That's 07505, a memorial service for his heroin addicted <laughs> mother. Okay, are we done? A minute? Okay. Karen, you're up. Give it up for Scott Chaplin. That was Woo! awesome. Uh, Scott heard that we were supposed to be roasting McDonald's, and he said, what? It's not even Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Scott buys his girlfriend McDonald's a lot, you know, because it's not like it's not like he's gonna damage your insides with his dick. <laughs> no, McDonald's. McDonald's was listed as one of the most dangerous places to work in 2023, especially if you're white and you run out of ranch. <laughs> Something that I feel weird about that I'm seeing in gender, in like the mm -hmm. gender warfield, yeah. is a uh, cousin to Marsha Warfield. But uh, the <laughs> Marsha that, Warfield, <laughs> Chicago. Um, is she Chicago? She from Chicago. But uh, is is like the I feel like for for some people they don't necessarily see the difference between gender identity and gender expression. That like we're we're seeing a lot of conflation there, sure. where people are like, I'm gender non-binary. It. It's like really sugar like. You know, you have some blue hair and you wear lipstick sometimes. So do me this favor. <laughs> Explain yeah. those terms real quick for me. Uh -huh. You said gender by... by I, so I, I, gender, really I don't, don't even know. know if you can because they're ch they're changing. The, the, it is, it is a moving it, target. It, it hasn't, been, just, yeah, it hasn't like, even been settled yet. But it's I like, just ask what your name what is. is. Yeah. What is your what gender is your identity? Right, right. Mm -hmm. You want to be called... That's your name. Yeah, right. And I'll treat you like a human being. Right. I, I don't know I, all I believe Akeem identifies as male. I think so. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm a dude. And it's male and I'm a dude. Right? I'm a dude. I'm a dude. Yeah. He doesn't even like being around gay people right. in general. I am. <laughs> he that, doesn't. He I loves, loves me. I this love fucker you. I loves you. Yeah. Yeah. You're a comedian too, too. That's so that's real. different. But he hangs around First. us. I hang around mostly comedians, which is regular. And he doesn't really hang around 
you know, get until he takes off and leaves. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm in the I'll see you motherfuckers yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it's like, yeah. how many dicks is in here? <laughs> As if you see him like, count count like you see him like, click off, off his phone. And then he's like, Akita yeah. has sound off. You I have, start. I have, One, I have a two. gay phone. Is this it? No, it's, it's over there. You have but a separate I'm, phone? I do have a separate you phone. You feel gay. That's actually smart. Yeah, I don't want all my dicks on one phone. He's been... He just thought he had an epiphany. <laughs> yeah, I have a gay phone. No, because people would be like, oh, show me a picture of your dog. And it's like, dicks. I dicks, know, dicks, I know. Dicks, that's, why I have, that's why I have a gay right? phone. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes if I don't want to be a hoe, I leave my gay phone at home. That's wonderful. Yeah. In case you get frisked. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I like? I like that you call it a gay phone and not just a phone. Yeah, it's a gay phone. Well, all my gay stuff's on that phone. You no, know, but I like, yeah. no, you, you get where I'm coming from. My gay phone, I'm like, there's a gay phone. It's like the bat phone. Why can't it just be a phone? <laughs> it's bat phone for butt stuff. <laughs> So guys, um, if you could give the 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 great people of Gas Digital the the you know those wonderful and the millions and millions <laughs> watching around the around world. the world, if you wanted to get yourself into a threesome, let's get a step by step process of, of how we're going to do this. <laughs> like, there you go. Let's get a step by step process for our listener today. Is going to end the night with two chicks or two dudes if that's what they're into. I don't know. You have advice for both. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down, brother. Break it down, dog. Professor Ray's threesome guide. I mean, realistically, it's it's comfortability at that point. I mean, I, I feel like there's enough people that are are very comfortable with each other to to do things like that. So the the people that the girls that I've had threesomes with with the two girls, they were they knew uh, they knew each other. When you say comfortability, is there like a vibe? So I think you get from I think it's like people? you have to have it in with at least one of them. Like you've probably been uh -huh. with yeah. one of them. And, and the other one so again, how we you're talked about, about you're about to nail. Uh, what how I was we talked about, about two podcasts yeah. ago. The girls. Have that more yeah. gender or uh, so, that sexual fluidity where girls sure. will make out with girls, but like girls guys are hot. So guys, we get it. Guys thinking out, There's, thinking about making out with guys is the like your worst nightmare. Guys are gross. But, There's, exactly, but girls they they'll make out with the girl, go home with the girl, screw mm -hmm. around with, with their friend, but are like, yeah, no, I'm I I like guys, I like dick, like I, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, for for a night like a girl <clears throat> can do a thing like that. Yeah, I think. I Wild. think just having a girl just that you're already connected with, that girl is pretty much the yeah. in for another girl if she wants to do if that. she wants it. So that's where I've been lucky enough where... Well, know. they've changed the recipe for Four loco, so it's not really meth anymore. So instead of Four yeah. loco, like, what would <laughs> I you... I mean, that's college. I mean, it, you know... College threesomes are different. That shit's just stupid. Like, there's no prepping. There's no game. Like, now, if I wanted a threesome now, I'd have to play my cards right. Mm -hmm. College, mm -hmm. nobody gave a shit. Nobody. Yeah. If I wanted a threesome now, I think um, it would actually be really super, super simple. It would just cost me about five grand. Yeah. 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 You gotta just pay for it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> hey, unless you go down to Columbia... What was what was that called? What were we? What? Passport Bros. Passport, Passport bros. bros. Passport Bros. <laughs> yeah, you see, problem <laughs> solver. <laughs> all in. Problem solver. Yeah, Ben, you want to go uh, half on a twenty dollar girl down in? Uh, <laughs> hey, we'll, hey, we'll have ourselves a railway. I feel like honestly, we could get twenty dollars. We could each have our own girl. For a the rest. Oh, shit. That's from now on. Two, yeah, two dudes and one chick is from now on known as a railway. A railway. <laughs> yeah.